Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this session around digitizing documents. This session is arranged on in partnership with uh, Bytes, and I'm your host today. My name is Jay Upton, and I'm the partner strategy lead for Adobe. And one of the focuses I want to talk about today is around digitizing documents and digital workflows. Now, without the grand title, what I want you to think about is the way that you may be spending money on paper, petrol, postage, and there could be a lot of time that's wasted or utilized that you might well be able to do better things with. So welcome to this Smarter Working Lives session. I hope that you're going to have a great hour with me. We may not take all of the hour. I would encourage you to ask questions, so be sure to put those in the chat. I won't be able to see them whilst I'm presenting, but I promise you, at the end of this session, probably in about 30, 35 minutes time, that I will give you uh, an opportunity to ask those questions or we'll run through those questions, if you will, and be able to answer those uh, as much as we can. Obviously, take the time to say hi to your colleagues and, and fellow uh, attendees. Um, I really do hope that we have a great session this afternoon. So let, let's deep straight uh, dive deep straight into it. Um, so this, this um, opportunity really for you is to think about maybe some of the investments that you've made as an organization. You may well have and more than likely have investments in Microsoft. You could well have investments either in Adobe technology or if not some of uh, the Adobe competition. And what I wanted to do today is really help you think about ways of improving innovating and maybe even inspiring you to think differently in what is possible and the most important thing probably the most important thing is the fact that it will take little or no additional cost and certainly working with bytes you're in great hands to be able to bring that to life so let's talk a little bit about the microsoft and adobe partnership this partnership is something that benefits both organizations microsoft are brilliant at productivity so you might be using microsoft teams uh, power apps Microsoft Dynamics, um, you might be using Adobe Acrobat or Adobe Sign and or Adobe Sign. But the reality is, is that did you know that these two technologies have the capability to work seamlessly with each other? And that's really what this partnership is about. The, the analogy I would use is if you think about car manufacturers, they're really good at manufacturing cars. But when it comes to maybe tires or um, music systems, then they will obviously go to somebody more specialist. So thinking about Pirelli or Continental, thinking about maybe Bose or Bang & Olsen. So in the same way, what Microsoft is saying is, look, we're great at these platforms, whether it's intelligent cloud and teams. But the reality is, is that when it comes to digitizing workflows and processes, Adobe really are the leaders. So let's talk a little bit more about that. The first thing is, is that we are allowing public sector entities to be able to help you focus on reducing your costs, but also increasing efficiency. And I think that it's a statement that's probably delivered by a lot of IT technology vendors today. But what I want to share with you today is how you can look to implement them within your organization. This partnership is a, a $1 billion partnership. This is where Microsoft and Adobe have both invested $500 million each to basically allow our technology to seamlessly integrate with each other. I'm going to use this example around Microsoft Teams and around Adobe Acrobat Sign. But the reality is this could be Microsoft Dynamics. It could be Power Apps. It could be Outlook. It could be PowerPoint. The integration could be with Adobe Acrobat Sign, but also it could be with Adobe Acrobat. So the analogy I'm using or the example I'm using is, is around Adobe Acrobat Sign and Teams, but this is possible within any uh, Microsoft application. The first thing is, is that all of the integration is included free of charge within your license. You may or may not be aware, but the goal for Microsoft long term is that we won't be opening up Outlook in the morning, but we'll be opening up Teams. And Teams will have the actions uh, and the communications that mean that that could direct the rest of our day. And the nice thing is, is that what Microsoft are looking for is applications from third party ISVs or vendors to be embedded and to be utilized within the team environment. And I'm very happy to say that Adobe Acrobat Sign and Adobe Acrobat are one of the first solutions that the user never, ever needs to leave Teams. And we'll show you that in a little while. Also, we integrate with Teams approvals, which may or may not mean something to you. But a lot of e-signature um, uh, uh, documents and, and, and requirements are driven through email. And unfortunately, busy inboxes, unmanned, uh, inboxes or indeed uh, uh, aggressive junk filters um, do not allow um, that workflow to, to happen seamlessly. 
So by working with Teams approvals means that we can give somebody a notification for a responsibility to review, to sign a contract, and that notification doesn't disappear until that's been actioned. And again, I'll show you an example of that in a little while. We also have something called Live Sign within Microsoft Teams. And Live Sign, as an example, could be, um, for example, we've got a police force in the UK that will use um, uh, uh, Microsoft Teams with a, a victim of crime, and they might use um, um, uh, some kind of witness statement that they wanted to take a, a statement for, for a particular uh, incident. And the idea being is by using Live Sign, the, the police person can have a discussion with the victim of crime, but more importantly is they can share the documentation and they can ask that person to sign the witness statement at the bottom. So digitally signing that document, which is, is as good as physically taking a face-to-face -face, uh, statement and also asking somebody to, to sign it with a pen. We also have pre-integration with Power Automate. And Power Automate, for those of you that may or may not be aware, is a very high level, very basic solution from Microsoft that is around RPA, Robotic Process Automation. In other words, asking technology to take some of the repetitive and mundane tasks out of our daily lives. And again, I'll, I'll give you some sense of what that looks like in a little while. Now, if you're involved in the IT delivery within your government entity, um, there's a good chance that you'll know there's a high cost of managing multiple applications, dealing with the security, with the user rights. And the great news is, is that this partnership is not just benefiting the user of Microsoft Teams, as an example, and, and Adobe Sign, but also benefits the IT department as well, because you can actually deploy and send um, Adobe Acrobat and Adobe Sign um, to your users using the Microsoft 365 admin console. And so from that perspective, it's very easy for you to be able to deliver and manage that user, um, uh, user right capability, as well as the security, because we automatically integrate with Azure Active Directory with single sign-on and multi-factor authentication. So there is no additional overhead in terms of managing and deploying those applications. We also run um, Adobe Acrobat Sign as an example on Azure. So if you're developing applications on Power Act, on Microsoft Azure, the great news is that you can integrate the two solutions together with no or little latency at all. So when I think about my time at Microsoft, and I didn't mention this in the introduction, is that I worked at Microsoft for six years. I was around when Microsoft Teams was launched by Microsoft. And back then, whilst it was launched, it was very difficult to see you know, what the potential and what the growth of, of that platform was going to be. With COVID, I think Microsoft saw an exponential growth and adoption of Microsoft Teams. The challenge is, is that when you think about Microsoft Teams in terms of basic video chat, thinking about um, you know, um, um, you know, chat discussions, you know, you, you're typing on the keyboard, or even file sharing, the challenge is today, of course, is that we're all looking for the next step, that next phase of digital transformation. And so if we were able to improve the knowledge and the accuracy of the worker, not worrying about how long that work has been employed at our organization, or indeed um, the technical capability of that user, then that is going to be a good thing. Also, it's about even where you've got people that are proficient with IT, how do we unlock that capacity? How do we increase that productivity? But as importantly, how do we make sure that it's secure? And also, from an accessibility perspective, how do we make sure that we meet the accessibility needs of the user? And that's something that I want to share with you over the next few slides. So again, I've used Adobe Sign as the application, but this could be Adobe Acrobat. And it can be integrated with one or all of these various applications. But more importantly is that we also have the connectors to be able to take and deposit information into third-party applications as well. So as an example, it might be as an organization, you've moved offices, and maybe there's some employment criteria that's changed, and you need to send a new employment contract to 300 people. Now, normally, that would take a lot of time and effort in terms of using Microsoft Word, thinking about uh, printing um, those documents, thinking about taking data from Workday and maybe furnishing the address details, thinking about posting those documents, if that was the case. And so what I want to try and make you think about is how could we have digitized that? How could we have made that easier and more automated? So let's imagine we're creating the document within Word, which is absolutely fine. We're going to insert the signature field using Adobe Sign within the Word document. But we're going to go to Workday, and we're automatically, for 300 different employees, going to take that standard template with the Adobe Sign signature capability, and we're then going to create 300 unique documents, each reflecting a um, unique information on the employee, on their address, 
maybe on their date of birth and maybe on their employee ID number. And we're gonna send that to 300 different people at the same time with one single click of a button. So imagine how much time, not just in terms of paper, petrol and postage, but think about the amount of time that you've saved being able to do that. And that's just one simple high level use case. So whether you're dealing with citizens, whether you're dealing with employees, whether you're dealing with suppliers, the nice thing is that we can take and deposit information from third party applications like Workday, like ServiceNow, Oracle, and so on. I'm gonna give you a quick example, just with Microsoft Word. Um, if you have Microsoft Word today, and you may have Adobe Acrobat or indeed Adobe Acrobat sign, um, I'm gonna show you how you can take a simple document and have it turned into a PDF, have it with a signature field, and send that to a user with literally one or two clicks. So what I've done is I've gone into my Word document, I've opened up the document, I've gone to insert Office add-ins, obviously this is for using it for the first time, I've searched for Adobe, I've selected Adobe Acrobat side for Microsoft Word, I click on add, I then accept the terms and conditions, and then I've got my document ready. I can then click on the right hand side and you can see here, create and share Adobe PDF, I can see request signatures. I could even fill out the document and sign it myself. But the point is, I can take a document, I can click on create and share PDF, or I can even put request signatures. And this box would come up on the right hand side. And if any of you use, I don't know, uh, Microsoft PowerPoint, whenever you're formatting objects or, or um, uh, images within, within PowerPoint, you have boxes that appear on the right hand side. This is a very similar feature. So in other words, I can take this document, I could put the email address in of the recipient or recipients that I want to send it to. I could personalize the information at the bottom that says, please review this document. It's really urgent for today. Click on continue. And literally this document would automatically send itself to the recipients needed, not needing Outlook, not needing Microsoft Teams. Okay, so that's just a very basic high level solution that you could actually um, turn on and switch on and use today. Now let's think about Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams, as I say, is a platform that I think a lot of organizations have adopted. When I speak to Microsoft about their public sector uh, strategy and their business, Microsoft Teams is a pivotal part of that. So how would we use Adobe Sign and or Adobe Acrobat within Microsoft Teams? Well, the first thing is we can go to the App Store and we can search for Adobe. Now, here's a quick flag. You might have a situation where Adobe is not appearing that means that your IT administrator may have restricted the applications that you can install. So be sure to go to your uh, Microsoft Teams administrator and ask them to enable the Adobe application suite. The great thing is, is that you can select Adobe Sign and or Adobe Acrobat, and those icons will sit on the left-hand side of your navigation bar. So that means that those applications are now running embedded within your Microsoft Teams environment, which we'll move on to in a second. You might remember I talked about Microsoft approvals. So when there is a contract that needs your review or needs your signature, a real-time notification will appear on the top left-hand corner of your team screen. This icon will not disappear until you have actioned your contract. Even if you were to go into the Adobe Sign application itself and sign the contract, or even if you were to go into your personal email and sign the contract, it would update real-time and the red icon would disappear. But let's have a look at Adobe Sign within the Microsoft Teams environment. What we can see here is that this is Adobe Sign running within the Teams environment, so there's no minimizing and maximizing of Windows for the users. Straight away, we can see the documents that we've created and sent. We can see their status in terms of where they are, whether they've been signed, whether they're in progress, or whether they've been archived, if they were really dated. We can see who the recipients are, but we can also set reminders. So if the, if the contract signature is really urgent, we might wanna set reminder for hourly. It might be that the contract is relatively urgent, we need it doing this week, so we can send a reminder daily. We can also signify we don't wanna disturb people on weekends if those people don't work weekends. And also that reminder is gonna be set until that action is complete. So until that contract is signed and sealed by that person, then obviously there's a responsibility for somebody to still receive those reminders. On the right hand side, you can see this is my Microsoft Teams environment on my mobile device. You can also see that Adobe Acrobat sign is embedded within my mobile application as well. So whether I'm on the road, in the field, in the office, I get a real time view of where I am in terms of those contracts. 
This is the Adobe Acrobat view. Um, not many people realize, but there is a free Adobe Acrobat viewer available for people to download and install and use within Microsoft Teams. So if you're using any of the Adobe competitors just for viewing PDF documents, I would really urge you to think about downloading the free Acrobat viewer, which allows you to make uh, annotations and notes and share documents. It just doesn't allow you to create PDFs. But obviously, there is a, a, a PDF a capability that you can upgrade to um, if and when required for those users. But this just shows you the ability for you to show and share documents within Microsoft Teams within Acrobat or using Acrobat in the same way. So let's think about the Microsoft Teams bot. Hopefully, you're familiar with the bot that's available within Microsoft Teams. This is a great example of where Adobe automatically integrates with that bot. Now, let's imagine there's two people that work in HR. Uh, my colleague has gone on holiday. And unfortunately, one of the people the, he was dealing with or she was dealing with um, from a contract perspective has an urgent request. So they call me. Um, unfortunately, John or Susan's on holiday. Jay, can you help me? So the first thing I can do is I can go into the bot and I can say, show me documents for, let's just say Susan for argument's sake, show me documents for Susan, subject to Azure Active Directory rights. I get access to see all of those documents that Susan is dealing with. And I have an option. My option is to send a reminder to the next person in that signature queue, or I could download the document and decide to take responsibility for that signature process. So hopefully you get a sense that even when people are away out of the office, or indeed on vacation or off sick, you know, God forbid, then the point is, is that the, the, the contract process or the document process doesn't need to stop because of that. And Teams and Adobe together can still help. Now, you may have people either within your organization or people that your organization deals with that have accessibility needs. Not many people realize that actually the accessibility proposition from Microsoft and Adobe is one of the strongest in the market. One of the things I want you to think about is the fact that with accessibility, it's one of those challenges where people think about accessibility physically in the workplace, thinking about entering the building, thinking about when somebody wants to use the bathroom. But actually, the requirements are there from a technology perspective as well. You may not realize, but a lot of these technologies are available to you today, and they're available free of charge. I know that Microsoft have presented this week, and they will have talked about Viva and Viva Insights, but I'm sure they will have touched on accessibility as well. But just in case, this is an example of my Microsoft Teams environment. And I'm looking at a message um, uh, from one of my, um, ironically, Microsoft colleagues. And I click on Immersive Reader. And this will give me the view of Hector's message. But what I've taken here is two things. One is I've taken the dyslexic view. So you can see these dots are inserted in certain words to help me understand them. I've also taken a color blindness view in terms of changed the background to purple and taken the text to a larger text with um, very simple characters. I also have the ability to look at the, uh, at the, the, uh, the, the message on a line by line basis. I also have the option to make that so that it's two lines at a time as well. Also, I may have people within my organization where English isn't their first language. And therefore, I could select the language that I preferred, Italian, Spanish, Swedish, German, whatever it may be. The point is, whatever I select in the drop down menu then gives me the ability to not only see words in, in a dyslexic view or even have these words read out loud in, in an English view, but it also shows me the Italian view and the read out loud in Italian as well. So let's think about Adobe. So from an Adobe PDF, from an Adobe, um, uh, Adobe Acrobat sign perspective, what you can see here is that we have a document. Now, I've been quite um, basic in terms of my view. I've decided to take a black background with a yellow font. And one of the things that never occurred to me until I really started to spend some time around accessibility is I, th I think because I don't suffer with color blindness, I just assumed everybody had the same version of color blindness. And obviously, that's not the case. So the user has the ability to change the background color, the font color, the font size. We also have the ability to do liquid mode. So if you've got a touch screen, uh, whether that's a laptop, desktop, or indeed mobile device, as you zoom in, the, um, the characters and the text will adjust so that you still get a really crisp um, uh, character view, but also it doesn't distort or pixelate in any shape or form because people with hard of sight will struggle with that. So that's another feature that we have. Also, for people with hard of sight, we have something called read out loud. That, that means that we could have the 
technology read this document to somebody as though they are um, sat next to them reading the document out. So it will say, dear Microsoft, and pause for the comma. Non-binding, full stop, pause for the next paragraph. Same thing happens, and we don't need a screen reader to do that. So if you have employees or citizens that are uh, hard of sight, then obviously there's some features there that immediately can be switched on and, and used in that sense. Now, I think personally, speaking to a lot of customers um, in public sector and in the commercial world, accessibility is still one of those topics that we still have a lot of um, work to do. It's not a destination. We're never, ever going to finish the journey. And I think when you look back to technology, even 25, 30 years ago, we still haven't finished the technology journey. It still keeps evolving. And I think that accessibility is going to be the same. Now, Hector Minto is the ambassador for accessibility for Microsoft, but more importantly, is the ambassador for technology for the UK government. So Hector and I did a discussion in front of a live audience probably about four or five months ago now, and that was recorded. We'll be sharing these materials after the presentation today with you, and you'll all have the ability to click on that link and watch that video. As I say, it's about 15, 20 minutes, but really well worth the listen if you're really interested in learning more about accessibility. The other key thing as well is that when we think about accessibility, we might be able to go out and use Microsoft Windows 11 or Microsoft Teams or even the latest version of Adobe um, Acrobat. The challenge is, is that when we started creating PDF as a, um, 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 uh, I suppose, as a technology sector or um, you know, as entities, um, PDFs have been around, believe it or not, for nearly 30 years. And so it's, it's OK to think about security and accessibility moving forwards. The challenge is, is there's a lot of business logic and there's a lot of data and there's a lot of documents that we've created over those last 30 years that present a bit of a historic challenge. So when we think about when PDS were created, even two years ago, three years ago, but I know organizations that are using documents that have been in production 10, 15, 20 years. The problem is, is that you don't know whether those documents support accessibility. So would they um, be able to be um, translated and recognized by a screen reader? You know, um, would they be able to um, allow somebody to zoom in and read the information in, 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 in a larger character base? Um, the, the answer is probably more than likely not. And so we can, um, Bytes and Adobe, we have a joint proposition where we can actually do, I suppose the word is an audit, but it, it's basically something that scans um, whatever you want us to scan. It might be your external website. It might be your internal network. But the reality is we can actually come back and tell you of all the documents that you publish PDF-wise, whether they are um, supporting accessibility or not. Okay, so number one, we know that in this example of, of this customer, they have 63% of their documents were um, supporting um, accessibility, but that meant that, of course, we had um, you know 37% of documents that weren't. That's a challenge, right? That's not good enough. Probably more pertinent is that you know just like accessibility 30 years ago probably wasn't on people's radars. I also think security wasn't. I don't think people when they created the first PDFs thought about the fact that there would be people or even organized uh, crime organizations thinking about taking data, thinking about trying to steal personal data, right? So again, if we could tell you of the documents that you publish, that may, many of them are unsecure, and maybe some of them also have personal identifiable, identifiable information in there, I think as an organization, whether it's regulatory, whether it's best practice, I would want to know this. So the great news is, is that working with Bytes, we can actually help you identify all of the documents you've ever created on PDF, whether they were created with Adobe, doesn't really matter. We can come back and tell you whether they're compliant, whether they are accessibility supporting, and also whether they're secure. But more importantly, we can also help you get all of those documents and turn them into the very latest standards. So even if these documents were created 20 years ago on ilovepdf.com, we can actually help you rebuild those documents, make them accessible, make them secure. Even some of the cheaper PDF um, converters would turn a document into an image. And an image would uh, take less space in theory um, you know, when, when storing it from a data perspective. But more importantly is when you think about using analytics or, or AI, 
The problem is, is that those solutions rely on characters or, or yeah, characters and words within, within documents. And if you're using images, it's not going to work. So with Adobe and with Bytes, we can help you convert those documents, as I say, latest version, latest accessibility features, latest security, but also taking those old images and turn them back into character-based documents as well. So if you're interested in that, be sure to speak to your uh, Bytes representative. So I suppose really when we're thinking about um, you know, your government entity, thinking about the way that you've rolled out Microsoft Teams, it's really about thinking about how can you remove manual and or paper-based processes. And some of those manual and paper-based processes probably weren't ideal when we think about the hybrid work environment. But those paper, paper and manual processes also are not ideal from an accessibility perspective. They're also not ideal from a sustainability perspective. So really what I want you to think about is all of the different departments, and I've gone very high level here. I'm sure you can think of a department within your organization or maybe even a certain um, set of people or processes within your organization where actually if you could digitize them, you would or you could. And not only can you digitize them, but you can place them into a workflow which is fail-proof that don't get lost in the post, that don't get lost, uh, lost in, in uh, filing trays. But also more importantly, is even when those processes have been completed, they don't get photocopied and stored in a dark and dusty room that somebody forgets about. Or if somebody left the organization, nobody knows where to find them. The great news is by digitizing some of these processes is that not only do you have the delivery mechanism to manage that, but you also are able to store those documents digitally for them to be identified and found again. Even if a person was to leave the organization, using some of the search facilities within Microsoft and Microsoft SharePoint, you could quite easily find those documents. Then thinking a step further about analytics, would it, wouldn't it be great if you could identify the suppliers that maybe your discount levels were not as high as they should be? Wouldn't it be great to be able to set off an analytic um, a query to say, tell me all the suppliers where we don't get less than 10% discount? And then bringing those contracts up and thinking about as a supplier management team how we can challenge that or even thinking about the way that you interact with citizens if you're running i don't know as an example um you're running a um, housing and you're thinking about you need to renew rental agreements it might be that you need somebody to go in and do a check on the um, tenants um, premises but you need to be able to digitize that to really drive out the manual process and paperwork and the input of data and finding ways to really speed that up and make it more effective. If there's any repairs that need to be carried out, to be able to have something uh, uh, completed by somebody that was inspecting the property, to then initiate a digital process, maybe through ServiceNow, to, to send that to the um, maintenance team for them to be able to book some time in the diary to make that happen. You get the idea, so hopefully it gives you a sense in terms of the art of the possible. So this is, I suppose, really, again, very high level, but this is thinking about workforce productivity. So you've seen using some of the um, examples that I've given you today around Microsoft Teams and Microsoft Word, how you can increase, increase productivity in the workforce. Thinking about how you can engage with citizens, you know, um, looking at service requests, dealing with case management, looking at correspondence. How can we digitize some of that? And even if you do have to print, maybe in some instances, the citizens may not have access to the internet or a device. So maybe in some scenarios you do need to print, but how do you digitize the processes before you print? Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. Um, thinking about legal automation or field workers, allowing workers in the field to be able to action items very quickly. Thinking about employees, employment contracts, thinking about termination of employment, thinking about temporary workers. This can all be driven from a digital um, perspective. And so I know that we've talked about Norfolk County Council in the past from an Adobe perspective. A lot of you may or may not realize, but we have a case study that's available on the website. But for me, this is a great example of where Microsoft and Adobe came together. And this is where Norfolk County Council were looking to remove and eliminate paper and printing costs. And what we were able to do is help them take some legal documents that normally take something like you know, 45 minutes to complete to then drive that down to 12 minutes per document. Now, I'm not saying 12 minutes is perfect, and I think there's some work going on now where we can even reduce that further. But the point is that we were saving roughly five days a month to automate some of those signature and sealing uh, processes. 
But also, more importantly, is that we're only doing it in one part, or we, in this particular case, I think, in one part of Norfolk, and we started to explore other areas. But for me, it's around how you can streamline services. How can we repurpose some of those resources that are lowly paid? You know, they work from Monday to Friday, nine till five. And, you know, it's a high turnover of staff. What can we do to use technology to do that? And how can we get those resources to re be repurposed? Maybe to be on the phone more with citizens or maybe to, to drive some, um, you know, improve innovation somewhere else in the organization. And that's something that really I want you to think about uh, moving forwards. So as we come to a close of this session, hopefully I've taken you through the, the potential, you know, hopefully giving you some innovation and some inspiration in terms of what is out there. The most important thing for me is that if you have Microsoft today and you have Adobe today, it is possible for you to switch a lot of this technology on today. There is no additional cost for you to pay to be able to make that happen. Some of that inter uh, integration is there already. You do not need to be an IT guru to be able to make it happen. A lot of the um, screenshot and examples that you saw was me doing that. I'm not a technical person by any stretch of the imagination. But likewise, if you're thinking of, of building your own applications using Microsoft Power Apps, or you're thinking of using Power Automate to drive some automation within your organization, well then work with Bytes and Adobe to help you achieve that. So think about this. Are there any, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> are there any repetitive and or mundane tasks that could be digitized? Are you using PDFs internally or even externally with citizens? And are they secure? And do they support accessibility needs? Can you save paper, postage, and petrol? We all know, well know, about the rising cost of these things. So if you can find ways of removing the need for those, then guess what? That's the money that could more than enough cover the investment that you need to make. Have you unlocked the technology investments within your organization? Because there is little and possibly no cost to change. So hopefully with that, we'll take some questions. And um, yeah, I'm more than happy to, to see whether we can help. If you've got any questions, you can place them into the um, into the chat. Okay, it doesn't look like we've got any questions this afternoon, but likewise, if you've got any questions, um, my um, my email address is jepton, so J-E-P-T-O-N at adobe.com. I'll put it in the chat as well because I know this is being recorded. Um, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> so if, um, if there are any questions, feel free to drop me a mail. Even if I can't help you myself, then we'll be more than happy to redirect you um, within the organization. Uh, and likewise, you can speak to your uh, Bytes account manager as well.